Hi everybody, Sam Lewis here from Sam's Diamonds Cancer Support and I'm here with another little meeting that I've got for you and today I've got a very special guest who is also a good friend of mine who I've been seeing for a couple of years now, I think it is. Um, her name is Emma Gwynn. Now I have lymphedema in my left arm which means it's slightly swollen. So I go to Emma and she gives me a treatment, a massage treatment, but I will let her introduce herself and she can tell you all about the treatments that she offers and where she offers them. So hi Emma, give us a wave. Hello. <laughs> tell us your full name, who you are, what you do, etc, etc. Off you go. So I'm Emma and I'm the specialist lymphedema therapist at the Delamay Centre at Halton Hospital. Um, I've got my assistant um, Dosi as well. So our team basically consists of myself, Josie, and Jane Farrell, the specialist lymphedema. Well, she's a specialist metastatic nurse now, um, but she only does one day lymphedema. So obviously, for me or Josie aren't available, and she is always there to go to as well. Um, so obviously, what we do at the centre is we help people with their lymphedema. So we measure them up for their compression garments. We show them obviously exercises and things that they can do to help self-manage. We carry out manual lymphatic drainage, that's a form of massage that helps to stimulate the lymphatic system to try and help encourage it to work a bit better. Because obviously when it's damaged um, through surgery or radiotherapy and chemotherapy, it just needs a bit of encouragement to help move the fluid. Um, also, we obviously some, some patients who are more chronic and um, they need to come in for bandaging. So sometimes patients will be on like a three week course where they'll come in every day and they'll get bandaged. And just to help manage the lymphedema and get it at a more manageable state for them. So what is it that, what's the difference? Can you explain the difference between normal massage and lymphatic drainage massage? If I was blind and I couldn't see what you were doing, can you just explain to me what it is and what it feels like, what happens? So obviously the way manual lymphatic drainage is carried out, it's a, it's a sequence of massage, if you like, that's targeted towards alternative um, lymph nodes so when the massage is carried out it's carried out in a specific way to make sure that you're moving the fluid to an alternative route that it'll be able to obviously be filtered filtered back into your system okay and you wear a glove don't you yes yeah, so we can either we can do manual lymphatic drainage either manually just with our hands or we can use like equipment as well so we do have the oscillation machine at the center so what that basically does is it attracts and releases the tissues. So it kind of helps to act as like a pumping effect on the lymphatic vessels as well. Um, obviously, there are other things that we can use. So we now have the vacuum therapy machine as well. Um, and that basically um, lifts up the, the subcutaneous tissue layers to allow the fluid to flow a bit better. There's not many of you about, is there? I mean, we've, we, I know of two people who do it. There's yourself and someone at a cancer support centre in Liverpool, but that's not the electric static -y one that you do on me. That's just normal massage. So she does lymphatic normal massage. So, I mean, is, is there a reason for that? Or do you know where else people can actually go or find out where their nearest um, specialist is? Obviously, unfortunately, there isn't a great deal of services, and that is one of the problems, and that's why self-management is really important. Um, there is Clatterbridge, but again, they only offer services to those who are in their area. With some services, it is pretty much postcode lottery, unfortunately. Um, and there's also um, Marie Curie and Walton as well. There did used to be one in Aintree, but unfortunately they've closed uh, now, so they don't uh, carry out any treatments anymore at Woodlands Hospice Aintree. Is that because of funding, do you think? Um, it's basically because she moved on to a different role and there was only her there. Um, so, right so is, is it it's a specialist kind of role so would you did you have to do lots of training in order to do this I mean what's your background how did you get into this so initially obviously I did um, complementary therapies and from there and um, I then studied under the University of Chester um, and did my degree and um, where I did my manual lymphatic drainage and that and then I went further and went to the Royal Marsden and did additional training there as well and I've also been to Swansea with a team in Wales, lymphedema care in Wales, but they're classed like a gold standard because of everything that they do. Um, obviously, in Wales, they have um, the lymphovenous anastosis and um, surgery available as well. What's that? So it's basically where they connect up um, a small vein to your lymphatic vessel and they carry out 34 procedures free 
on the NHS in Wales a year. Whereas if someone wanted to access that here, which I have had one patient that has done that, it's a £14,000 operation. <gasps> really? That is crazy. That is crazy. I mean, I know people go down to London and they pay the money to get that done, but is it guaranteed to work? Uh, the lady that I do know of that has had it done, unfortunately, the only results that she's received is that her arm doesn't throb anymore. But in terms of a limb volume, it hasn't made a great deal of difference, unfortunately. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, me. And that was 14 grand. Jeez. To her, it's been worth it because she's got rid of the throbbing, but obviously it's not been the full outcome that she hoped for. What a shame. What a shame. Oh, my goodness, me. So when you're actually in, um, if I was to come to you to get a massage, can you explain what it's like in the Delamere Centre and how we go about, what's the procedure, so to speak? Is it daunting? Is it scary? The centre is a lovely, bright place. Obviously, people have maybe even had their treatment there. It's very welcoming. You know, the, the therapy room in itself is very relaxing. The ceiling, the way it's... Um, built obviously you're on the bed and you're looking up at the sky and it is it's very very peaceful yeah it's like a pyramid isn't it and at the top of the pyramid there's a window out to the sky so you can just sort of drift off and I can say as well that when you walk into the room she's got this beautiful music playing it smells absolutely stunning and it's like so silent it's just like you don't want to leave <laughs> you could just stay there all day um, but yeah it is a beautiful place to be and I think if people can't get to a place like that would you suggest um maybe a normal massage parlor like a beauty parlor but suggest to them that they you know push the fluid to the opposite side so they can go to lymph nodes that are working could would that work or would you suggest just a specialist doing it yeah we have had people in the past who you know kind of go to a spa and go and obviously just make sure that they are massive massaging upwards and across just hold there one second sorry you just we'll back yes, up and uh, can edit this um you just then. broke up loads then you broke up loads then so you you said um that yet yeah, if people do go to start from that bit again if people do go to a massage parlor so yeah obviously if people want to go to massage parlor they want to still feel involved with their friends you know have a nice pamper and that that's perfectly fine just as long as you are making sure they're asking the person doing the massage to always massage up and across to the alternative side that they've had the, the treatment on wonderful so would you say there's a set amount of time like post cancer treatment until you can have this done or is there like because i know that if you go to a lot of beauty parlors they'll say that they won't massage anybody who's in cancer treatment or who's had cancer um what what's the recommendation do you know how long it needs there to are be a lot of cases that say that um also at the center as well and um, there are three of us that are trained in oncology massage so even while you're going through your treatment we are able to still massage you okay and so would you suggest going to other places as well or not obviously if you were to go to other places there's no guarantee that they would be trained in oncology massage so the odds are that they won't carry out any treatment on you until at least probably a few weeks after say six to eight weeks after you've finished all your treatment okay and is that why, why is that you know it's just to make sure that you've healed and everything obviously a lot of places aren't experienced in working with cancer patients it, with some they're newly qualified so they can be quite scared of you know touching someone who said oh you know i've had cancer and um, can be quite daunting for them so they just choose not to right got you got you so you were saying before as well as coming to see you and having a lovely relaxing experience and having that time out um to get that lymphatic drainage you did also say that there were other things that we could actually do to self-manage it could you tell us what they are yeah obviously self-massage is really important as well so obviously we show show people how to self-massage and um, obviously depending on the area that's affected it will depend on Need to do it obviously exercise is really important because your lymphatic system doesn't have a pump so it really does rely on those muscles contracting your lymphatic vessels so you really need to make sure that you're keeping up your exercises daily you know because the amount of people that come through and they'll say oh yeah you know i'm doing all my housework i'm keeping moving but those 
type of movements aren't the same effect that you'll get from actually carrying out your exercises. And um, obviously weight management as well is really important because if you are overweight, it does put excess pressure on your lymphatic vessels and it further compromises their functioning. Right, that's not going to help get it down. Okay, so um, when you're saying these exercises, because I know a lot of people that I know, because they get really stiff shoulders and arms, and um, they tend not to use that arm, they think that's the best thing to do. Um, the, there's something called cording that can develop from that, is that right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so obviously if you do get cording, obviously if you notice that your range of movement's restricted, it becomes quite painful. I'd always recommend that you go to GP or obviously speak to your specialist nurses and that and get them to either assess or refer you on to a physiotherapist as well. Because as well, if you do have cordon, it will increase your risk of developing lymphedema because your range of movement's restricted. So what is cording? Can you explain to us what that is so people can say, yeah, I've got that or no, I haven't got that? So if you have cordon, if you, if you liken it to um, a guitar strand, that's how it will feel underneath your arm and you'll be able to physically feel it and it will twang when, when you touch it. Oh, that's gross. It's quite gross. <laughs> yeah. it did, when you go to physio, they will snap. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's just not put me off. <laughs> Luckily, I've never had cording. But you will get cording if you don't do your exercises. So it's really important to do your exercises, girls, and then you won't have to go and get it snapped. That sounded so scary, Emma. <laughs> the relief people get from it once it is snapped, though, is really good. And it, although it sounds scary, it's not. It's a relief. <laughs> right. Got you. Okay. Well, that's good. So, could you give us some exercises? You'll have to describe them because we've got some people who'll just be listening to this and some people who'll be watching it. So, could you give us some exercises that we could possibly do? This is just for breast so again, cancer, just obviously. Show Simple shoulder rolls, which again will help. Everyone can do them, doesn't cause you any discomfort. It's quite easy to do, you know, forwards, backwards. And it feels quite nice as well, helps to loosen you up, especially after a stressful day or depend on your occupation, whatever you're doing. You know, nice. Okay. Obviously, yeah, stretching over. But if you can't do that as well, you can use a scarf to help you because sometimes, especially if your, your movement and your range isn't great, if you use a scarf, it will help you to stretch that arm over a bit more as well. So you're actually taking a scarf between two hands, raise them up above your head and then pull yeah. one side of the scarf down. Okay. There's many exercises you can do scarfs. Obviously, you can use them to help push and pull. Um, I, I recommend everyone use a scarf but it's nice as well because sometimes having a prop to actually work with because it makes it feel a bit better and a bit easier for you especially if you're struggling after your surgery and that and you're still in that sort of recovery period what and is hand... sorry what is the time period from say you've had surgery to when you should be doing your exercises so obviously physios come around and leave you your booklets pretty much straight after you've done your surgery don't they and ideally, you should start to, to do them as soon as you feel able to. Wow. Because I knew that I used to be scared that I was going to bust open any stitches or anything like that from doing it. But you do have to push it, don't you? You do have to push it and keep doing them Obviously, during that time. You're doing it and starting off light and then building it up. It is important that you do keep moving. And obviously, that's why the physios come around and they leave you your booklets and that because they want you to get moving as soon as you're able to. I suppose if you don't use it, then as it's healing, it's going to heal in that position, isn't it? So you've got to keep moving it so it heals in a flexible position. That makes sense like to me, said, anyway. You lose it. You lose it so exactly. Like exactly. Is there any other exercises you've got for us? So again, hands. People forget the hands. So getting your fingers to your thumbs and getting your fingers moving. Oh right. So your thumb touching each finger in your, on the same hand taken to yeah. that's like a, a meditation thing as well isn't it <laughs> <laughs> to make you concentrate on that yeah oh everyone's concentration isn't all that great either after treatment so it's just something to help keep the yeah, mind yeah <laughs> double whammy double whammy okay and Is again you get like hair is stuck to something rolled up and you can squash them obviously so you've got some resistance to help with your hand or even if you're just open and closing 
to get your hand moving, obviously doing your wrists as well, because sometimes people can find that they get like a, a bulge of fluid that can collect at the wrist as well, so making sure that you're keeping the wrists nice and mobile, doing all your wrist exercises as well. Okay. Anything else? Obviously simple. If you have like a, a resistant band or something, or even just if you get a bottle of water or a tin of beans, because it's really important that you keep your strength up in that arm as well. Because what a lot of people tend to do is, that, like you've said, they tend to not use it and then they wonder why the strength isn't that great in that arm and then they get a bit worried because it doesn't feel great and they're not able to do anything that they would have done before. Whereas if you actually make sure you keep on top of those things, obviously in your recovery period, you will need to make sure you do extra with it to help the muscles recover and that instead of just... You know, sometimes I think, oh, I'm okay, I'm just going to sit on the couch because, you know, I'm recovering, I'm going to allow myself some time, that's, that's fine as well. Um, but you do need to make sure that you are keeping active. Yeah, we've got quite a few ladies in the group who completely can't even lift their arm here now because they didn't do their exercises and it's, they're restricted with a lot of things and they wish they'd done them. I'm like, just do them, just do them. <laughs> Is there anything else that you think that we should know about, Emma, that I've not asked you already? Skincare as well. Skincare is really important. A lot of people really do um, let that go. I've got a lady at the minute and her hands are all cracked and awful and it does panic me that she's going to get an infection. And I've kept on it and it's getting a bit better. Um, but obviously, you're more at a higher risk of getting cellulitis. And if you do get cellulitis, it does increase your risk of developing lymphedema. So you really need to make sure that you're keeping on top of your skincare and doing it daily um, just so that you don't get an infection. Can I just um, oh, sorry, reinforce that? Because in the last two months, I've had cellulitis twice because I did, look at the look, she's going to shout at me. <laughs> because I got prickled through my gardening gloves. So I had gardening gloves on, and because I was dealing with prickly items, I got prickled in my finger and I got prickled on my arm the second time. So I've had to get gardening gloves that come up my arm now for, to protect it and double layer them as well. Because both times that's all it was. And then that night I got a red patch on my arm and it spread and it spread and it spread. And it was like, right, OK, better get in touch with the doctors. Don't feel too well. And the last one happened on bank holiday weekend. So it happened on the Saturday morning. So I was like, well, everywhere's going to be closed till Monday. So I had to beg, steal and borrow from the neighbours, anybody who had any fluoxacillin, because I knew that's what I needed. <laughs> so she gave me like a three days worth and then I got to the doctors on the Tuesday. But yeah, it's horrendous because if it doesn't get treated quickly, it can get quite serious, can't it? And you have to go to hospital. Yeah, people can be hospitalised with it and it can lead to sepsis as well. It is quite serious. People just think, oh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a rash, it'll go, I'll leave it. And it can make you really unwell. For me, it got a little bit itchy, but it was a red patch and I noticed it was growing. And that was the sign for me because this is, that was the third time I've ever had it now. Um, so I sort of know the signs and I get on it quite quick now. And my doctors are really good as well. So it was a quick phone call to them and they sent it to the um, chemist that day so I could get them down my neck. So luckily I'm, I've got a very good doctor backing me up as well. But yeah, it's not something to... Uh, to get if you can avoid it definitely try and avoid it by taking care of your skin as emma says and you know garden it watch it don't stop biting your nails as well <laughs> that's another one that could cause it if you bite your nails a little bit too deeply you're in trouble so um anything else emma you think we need to know give us your expert skills again especially in the lovely weather the amount of people who get burnt seen quite a few of them this week in the sunshine um so make sure that you're using your sun factor and obviously where possible yeah where possible don't be burning obviously your affected sides because again you'll get an infection and your arm will is more likely to swell okay wonderful well thank you for giving us your time that was really useful so we've got exercises we've got advice you've explained to us what you do and all the different things that you do i mean you don't just do arm either do you you do legs you do everything don't you yeah, so obviously lymphedema can occur anywhere, so it can occur head and neck, breast, genitals, abdomen, pretty much anywhere. <laughs> and you would actually recommend doing those exercises anyway, whether you have lymphedema or not, don't you? Yes, 
because obviously it further helps to reduce your risk. Obviously, the main thing is reducing your risk of developing it in the first place. Obviously, there are certain factors around treatment and things that, you know, they're unavoidable and obviously they do place you at a risk. But where possible, it's important to make sure you're doing all, all you can um, to, to avoid developing lymphedema. Yeah, I mean, the first time I ever got my lymphedema, it was off a, a bee sting. And there's nothing you can do to prevent that, but it just happened and that was it then. It was the luck of the draw. So that's another thing to be careful of. Anything that could bite you, use your sprays on that arm, make sure nothing wants to come near. But um, yeah, it's, it's really useful information. I really do appreciate you coming on, Emma, and doing that for us. Um, if anybody okay. has any questions, how do they contact you? So they can obviously ring the centre, um, so the number is 01928753115 or they can email me at e.gwyn at nhs.net as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, really appreciate it. You're doing an amazing job, You're keeping us all small. <laughs> You're stopping us getting bigger and growing. All right, thanks Emma. Give everybody a wave. Bye bye everybody, hope you enjoyed that.